CSK Sofia are by most measures the most successful club in Bulgarian football, having won a record 31 top flight league titles in addition to 20 Bulgarian cups. CSKA are also the only Bulgarian club to have reached the semi-finals of the European Cup or Champions League, having done so twice, once in the 1966-67 season and for a second time during the 1981-82 campaign. However, following a significant era of dominance within the Bulgarian game, which lasted up until the mid-1990s, CSK Sofia embarked upon a 25-year decline, a decline which was accelerated by the controversial and deeply unpopular rise of former Minos Ludogorets, which I may well cover in isolation in a future video. CSKA, which is a fairly common prefix in many former Soviet republics, just stands for Central Sports Club of the Army which is exactly what CSK Sofia were. Born out of about a thousand different mergers of various football clubs throughout Sofia, who were all facing their own financial problems, CSK Sofia's official founding date is May 5th, 1948, although they weren't founded under the name CSK Sofia. The club's original name, in 1948, was September Pre-CDV, and they experienced three different name changes in their first six years of existence varying from the pretty wordy Otbar na Sofiskia Garnison, meaning Team of the Sofia Garrison, to the rather more terse CDNA, meaning Central House of the People's Army. Put bluntly, CSK Sofia have had more name changes than Snoop Dogg, and the CSK prefix wasn't introduced until 1962. The club finally became known officially as CSK Sofia in the early 1970s, but even that wouldn't last long. In 1985, having just missed out to their bitter rivals Levski Sofia in the fight for the league title, CSKA and Levski met in the Bulgarian Cup final. In a memorable clash, packed full of blood and thunder, much of which you can watch on YouTube, the two teams quite literally clashed on multiple occasions. In a match which needed no help in terms of bitterness or anger, a string of controversial refereeing decisions led to tempers boiling over. Fights broke out, three players were sent off, and CSK won 2-1 but it was the aftermath of this match that was more significant than the game itself. Supposedly appalled at the violence on show at the Vasilevsky National Stadium, the Central Committee of the Bulgarian Communist Party ruled that both clubs had to be disbanded and refounded under new names and new management, whilst also handing CSK's promising 19-year-old forward Haristo Stoichkov a lifetime ban from the sport. That was later reduced to a 12-month ban, and Stoichkov obviously went on to become Bulgaria's greatest footballing export, winning the Ballon d'Or in 1994 after dragging Bulgaria through to a World Cup semi-final. CSK were reformed as Sredit, meanwhile Levski Sofia became known as Vitosha, although they would return to their previous names following the fall of communism in 1992. The fall of communism also brought an end to CSK's affiliation with Bulgaria's Ministry of Defence, and in many respects, this would be the first blow on their road to a quarter of a century of decline. CSK still won four league titles over the next 16 years, but cracks were starting to emerge through changes in ownership, a managerial revolving door, and ineffective general management. CSK's most recent top flight title came in 2008, but immediately following that success, the club was informed it wouldn't be allowed to compete in the Champions League due to unpaid obligations owed to the Bulgarian Football Union, and they were even threatened with expulsion from the Bulgarian league system as a whole. Ultimately, that second crisis was averted, or at least delayed, but CSK were banned from the Champions League, with an added sense of bitterness from the fact that their spot was instead handed to league runners-up Levski Sofia. Following the chaos, club president Alexander Tomov resigned, later to be arrested, and sued for embezzling millions of leather out of CSKA. Over the next eight years, CSK continued to compete, but all whilst lurching from one crisis to another, with speculation surrounding bankruptcy abound. Further controversy arrived in 2013 when, with the club on the verge of bankruptcy, a consortium of club legends led by Alexander Tomov, CSK's former club president, who was still disliked by many due to his role in the club's financial problems in 2008, took on control of the club. The new regime portrayed an image of newfound wealth, bringing in Mamadi Sidibe and Martin Petrov from the Premier League and Algerian goalkeeper Reza Mboli, whilst making CSK the first club from Eastern Europe to be publicly traded, as the army men were listed on the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. In truth, the new regime had only papered over the cracks, never putting a dent in CSK's serious debts that creditors had long been calling in. Tomov once again left the club in the lurch, as CSK became a rudderless, debt-ridden club, with fans desperately looking for an owner to come in and save them. 
They found a new owner, but not a savior. And in 2015, CSK were stripped of their A-group license, meaning they would start the following season in the third tier of Bulgarian football. Throughout much of this time, CSK's owners had actually been extremely wealthy people. Vasil Boshkov, who is often described as the wealthiest Bulgarian on earth with a net worth of 1.5 billion US dollars, owned the club from 1999 to 2006. Boshkov has been nicknamed The Skull, and like anyone with the nickname The Skull, his past isn't squeaky clean. Named in the WikiLeaks documents, Boshkov has been labelled a gangster with close ties to organised crime, and he is currently exiled from Bulgaria in Dubai, a move he made in February 2020 to avoid charges of murder, money laundering, tax evasion and rape. When Boshkov sold CSK in 2006, he did so to Pramod Mittal, the brother of steel magnate Lakshmi Mittal, who is one of the wealthiest Indians and citizens of the United Kingdom, with an estimated net worth in excess of $10 billion. You can forget about Mittal for now, I only mentioned him to emphasise that CSK's owners have often had plenty of cash, but Bulgaria's wealthiest person, aka The Skull, aka Vasil Boshkov, may crop up again in this story later on. During their only season in the third tier, CSK Sofia won the league title without a single defeat to their name, dropping only two points and becoming the first team from outside Bulgaria's top flight to win the Bulgarian Cup. However, after CSK Sofia hit rock bottom in 2015, unable to pay their creditors and banished from Bulgaria's top flight, the club was taken over by another very wealthy man named Grisha Ganchev. Ganchev, who is said to be Bulgaria's fifth richest individual with a net worth of $450 million, had owned fellow Bulgarian outfit PFC Litex Lovek, named Litex after his company Litex Motors, and Lovek after Ganchev's home city of Lovek, since 1996. Lovek won four top flight titles under his ownership, becoming one of the most successful Bulgarian football clubs based outside of Sofia. One might imagine that would build up some goodwill and sentiment towards one's hometown club, but Ganchev was seemingly unmoved by his close ties to the city and success with the football club. Following their success in the third tier, Ganchev actually let CSK Sofia be dissolved and the club briefly ceased to exist. He subsequently applied for the top flight license of Litex Lovek to be instead handed over to the seemingly newly founded PFC CSK Sofia, although all he had actually done was rename PFC Litex Lovek as PFC CSK Sofia. His request was further complicated by the fact that Litex Lovek had technically been relegated themselves from Bulgaria's top flight due to withdrawing all their players mid-game during the 2015-16 season in protest after two of their players were sent off. Nonetheless, the Bulgarian Football Union granted Ganchev his wish, and PFC CSK Sofia became a top flight club once again. Meanwhile, his son Denal Ganchev took control of Litex Lobek, who themselves now had to start out once again in Bulgaria's third division. Despite the rather mangled route by which they had returned to the top flight, many CSK Sofia fans felt the club's Bulgarian Cup success, which was their first major trophy in five years, was enough of a reason to put their faith in Grisha Ganchev to bring the good times back to the Bulgarian Army Stadium. Others were less impressed. Having had so many false dawns over the previous couple of decades, a number of CSK Sofia fans had become distrustful of wealthy owners. What's more, the route Ganchev took left many feeling as though PFC CSK Sofia weren't actually a continuation of CSK Sofia, but either a renaming and moving of Litex Lovek or a new club altogether. Disillusioned, a group of CSK Sofia fans decided to found their own club, named Football Club Central Sports Club of the Army 1948 Sofia, or FC CSK 1948 for short. Founded in 2016, the club had to start out in the amateur fourth tier of Bulgarian football, but their third promotion in four years last season booked CSK 1948's place among the top table of Bulgarian football this season. In their first two seasons, CSK 1948 didn't lose a single league game, and across their four seasons in total, the club has only been beaten on five occasions, meanwhile they have won 107 games, conceding only 59 goals and scoring a whopping 298. In their four years since 1948 Sofia were founded and Litex Lobek became CSK Sofia, the two teams have been fighting over the history, heritage, trophies and badge of the original CSK Sofia. Supporters of 1948 Sofia challenged the legitimacy of CSK Sofia by claiming that Litex Lobek could not just become CSK Sofia overnight and that only a clean break and a fresh start can be viewed as the true continuation of the former club. 
Initially, both clubs used the badge of the original CSKA until the government decided to auction off the rights to the original club's imagery, a bidding war which CSKA unsurprisingly won with a bid of 4 million euros. They subsequently threatened to sue 1948 Sofia for continuing to use the original badge in 1948, now play with a different badge, although they maintain that they are the continuation of the original CSKA. The majority of former CSK fans support CSK Sofia, although it is a particularly vocal minority who support 1948 Sofia, who have also received the approval of a number of former CSK legends. In February 2019, Vasil Boshkov, the man known as the Skull, reacquired PFC CSK Sofia, although he relinquished all ownership of the club upon his move to Dubai. CSK Sofia are now owned by a combination of Grisha Ganchev, Yulian Injov, and club legend Risto Stoichkov. 1948 Sofia remain entirely fan owned and have garnered the respect of many within the Bulgarian game for their organic, fan driven rise up through the divisions. The opening game of the 2020 21 Bulgarian First League drew 1948 Sofia in their first game in the top flight against CSK Sofia. Following four years of fighting off the pitch, the two teams got the chance to lock horns in the first game of the season last week. On a warm, overcast evening in the Bulgarian capital, 1948 Sofia raced into a 2 0 lead after just 33 minutes, before being pegged back to 2 all, which is how the game finished. Stadiums in Bulgaria are currently limited to 50% of capacity due to health reasons, but whilst 1948 Sofia fans were significantly outnumbered by CSK Sofia fans, they were not to be outsub. Ultimately, CSK Sofia died in 2016. Whether they have been reincarnated as CSK Sofia or 1948 Sofia is up for debate, as is whether they have been reincarnated at all. Ultimately, both clubs, and perhaps even CSK's eternal rival Zalewski, can agree on just one thing, and that is that no one likes Ludogratz. But that's another video for another time. Until then, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I apologise for any poorly pronounced words. You'll be shocked to discover that I am not a native Bulgarian speaker. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to hit the like button and leave your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you enjoy these type of documentary style videos, make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for the channel, since hopefully there should be plenty more to come, and the more committed supporters I have of these types of videos, the more freedom it gives me to make them. One last thing, normally I like to do a shout out if someone has suggested a video idea, but so many people suggested this one that I couldn't possibly credit them all. However, I will say a particular thank you to Bulgarian subscriber Vasco, who sent me an email with lots of helpful info. And also just a big hello and thank you to all of our Bulgarian subscribers. There should be a link to a video about Bulgarian legend Georgia Spurahov on screen now, should that be of interest to any of you. Thanks again for watching, and if you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter as well, the username is simply HITC7s.